I'm going to make a start. Um, so this week's topic is, are you too busy to change your drinking? And I wanted to use this picture because it's another piece of street art from near where we work. And it actually really encapsulates um, this for me, which is that um, we often talk about being busy. It's a common actually being busy is a bit like a fetish really in the UK at the minute knowing that you're busy either with your children with your family with your hobbies with um, gym with work is something to be proud of and often when we are people who are drinking we drink to cope with being busy we drink um, to stop ourselves moving and being busy because we're so used to moving all the time we're never quite sure how we stop and unwind because we're in a constant state of stress um, and actually that's quite difficult for for us to deal with when we want to change our drinking because we use that idea that we're busy as an excuse and I've talked about excuses in the past we've we we make thousands and thousands of excuses about changing our drinking and why we can't change our drinking this week we can't change it because you know, we've got a wedding in a couple of months' time, so there's no point changing before then. Or our birthday's in a few weeks and we don't want to change before then. Or, you know, maybe I'll just get this Saturday out of the way because it's a special date with a friend that I've seen and I haven't seen for ages. And um, I'll give up after that. Now, we know very well that we use those excuses um, to stop taking action now and keep putting off and putting off and procrastinating, making the change that we need. Well, actually being busy is its whole own subject of procrastination because we will always use being too busy as a way to push back and push back decisions that we know are ultimately important for us, that are really important for our future, but seem too hard right now. So it becomes a perfect form of procrastination. And as a society, because we um, enjoy that notion of being busy because we fetishise being busy. It becomes a completely um, plausible reason to put off doing something here and now. And that plays right into the hands of your inner critic who goes, yeah, you don't really want to do this anyway. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be hard. So how about you wait until you're less busy? Maybe you're trying to, when you're on holiday, when you've got time, then of course you make an excuse that you can't do it on holiday because you couldn't possibly do a holiday without drinking and so on. So these become self-perpetuating myths that we allow ourselves to believe, that we use social conventions to give plausibility, but actually just play into the hands of the wine witch or the, the demon in our head or the inner critic who says, you know what, this is too hard, you might fail, you can't possibly change. And that's why being busy in itself is a really difficult concept um, to deal with. But also being busy is difficult because actually you do need to make time to change your drinking. Whenever you want to change anything about yourself, whether you want to learn a new skill, you know, you went to school, you went to college, you go to evening class, or if you um, uh, want to get fit or do, some, or do something about changing yourself, it always takes some time. It's never something that is completely instantaneous it takes some commitment from you and again um, you it's really easy to say well look I haven't got time to dedicate think about that now there are too many there are too many notices on the group and I can't possibly keep up with them and therefore I haven't got time or um, I've got a book to read I mean I can't tell you how long I had what must have been a vast library of books about changing drinking that I never ever had the opportunity to read because I thought I was too busy I wasn't too busy. I was continually hungover and feeling guilty and scared, scared of what the inside of those books would tell me about what I had to do, how I would have to change. And so I put them off and put them off. And too busy was the excuse. And of course, that's all rubbish. So I'm not sure if any of you use um, uh, being too busy as an excuse, but you might recognise that in yourself. I'm just closing down a few things because my computer is going absolutely bonkers right now. Um, so it's using a lot of memory and I don't want it to cut out. I've only got about 5,000 windows open on my computer because, of course, I've been very, very busy today. 
if you want a really good example of how um, being too busy stops you doing things, look at all that swimming I did in June when I was trying to beat Jill at um, at swimming. And I did out swim Jill June and I beat her. And I felt so good about it for like a whole five minutes that you feel good about these things. And then come July, I've decided I'm far too busy with the festival. It's an hour. It's an hour in my morning. I know it makes me feel better, but I've already put it on the back burner because I'm too busy. I allow it to be an excuse that stops me actually having to move my arms and legs in some water. It's completely pathetic, isn't it? It's really, really bad. Anyway. I'm just going to check for any questions so far. Ooh. I've done something to myself. I'm sure it wasn't bad. Hi everyone. I'm just trying to just check there aren't any questions so far. And failing. Um, okay. Right. I have to edit that little bit out in the middle. It's going so seamlessly with my new gadgets. But anyway. Cool. Right. So, if you're using busy as an excuse to either moderate your drinking or um, to change your drinking or to change anything else, because all of these things are um, interchangeable with other changes we want to make in our life, like swimming, like um, not eating cake, like um, uh, not dealing with your relationship issues. Do I have any more on my list? Wait a minute. Um... Yeah, those are the main ones. Uh, uh, not earning money. All of those things, I keep putting them off because I enjoy the busy instead of, of doing the things that are hard, like asking people to pay for things or um, or dealing with difficult conversations or not passing the cake shop and not actually going in and buying something. I have to say, just for reference, everybody, for ages and ages and ages, I made sure I never, ever went and tried a donut in the new sourdough donut thing. And like we've been here for over a year and I deliberately never went to try it so that I could never ever taste that sourdough donut. And then Sam, Sam made me have one. I'm blaming Sam for this. And now all I can think of is these amazing sourdough donuts. It's bad, these things that we do to ourselves. And it's amazing really, isn't it, if you think about it. We use busy as an excuse to do more damage to ourselves as if being busy wasn't the thing that was damaging us in the first place. So how do we how do we stop hurting ourselves and how do we stop being too busy to change our drinking? Well, first of all, you need to recognise that this is all within your control. You may use many excuses. You may use stresses of work. You may use stresses of family. You may use the fact that um, certain things are happening in your family. You may use the fact that you need to get up early to sort different things out. You may have caring responsibilities. You may have lots and lots of things on your list, but in reality, they are all within your control in some way or another. Either how you react to those things, because you don't always have to react to stresses by drinking. It's a learned behaviour that is convenient for you, and so you, you choose that behaviour. You've chosen that behaviour in response to a situation. You choose often to be busy in order to not have to deal with the things that are important. It's a form of procrastination. But the important thing is, is being too busy is not, doesn't make you drink, you make you drink. Having a terrible relationship with a family member doesn't make you drink, you make yourself drink in response to it. You have chosen that action and that behaviour in response to that stimuli. Um, you, uh, you know, the sourdough van does not make me eat donuts just by being there. I make me eat donuts and I find really good excuses in order to make that happen. Um, so th you have more control than you think you have and being busy, just like drinking, is within your control and you have the power to change all of this. And the more you realise that you have the power within you already to change your drinking habits and change the things that are slowing you down and holding you back, the more you'll be able to progress and the quicker you'll be able to progress. And that's the same whether you're moderating or quitting or just taking a month off. All of these things are about change and, and it requires you to have the knowledge and the confidence that you've got the skills within you. And most importantly is that you're not powerless. You are in fact powerful. You have control over this thing called your body and what you do with it. And you need to seize control of it and take it away from excuses and take it away from your inner critic and take it away from being busy and re-own it and say, I'm no longer going to damage this in the way that I have been. The power is all yours. 
Secondly, um, I would suggest that you do the decision balance sheet. Now, this is in the file section of the group, but I will also show you a copy of it here. Look, look at me using Wizzy technology. Um, like I don't. Um, anyway, uh, uh, decision balance sheet's quite useful to do. It's really simple. Look, it's got four words on the page. The pros and the cons, change and not to change. And the reasons why this is good to do is because um, it's good. You can say that I'm too busy to change. I'm too busy to change. I've got too much going on to dedicate some time to changing my drinking. But in reality, if you sat down and looked at the consequences of not changing, what are the what are the cons of not changing? What are the pros of actually changing? And and start to balance them out. You'll begin to see that you can't carry on as you are. It is impossible for you to keep on drinking as much as you are be out of control as often as you are and 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 not put some time aside to do something about it if you carry on as you are things will get worse and if you begin to do this sheet you might begin to realize that actually you take longer in the supermarket because you're finding excuses to buy drink you're manipulating social situations in order to be able to drink more you're tired a lot of the time so you're waking up late you're not going to the gym you're you're feeling lethargic you're eating the wrong foods. They may also be all of those those cons of not changing. Those things will continue. And so once you begin to balance that out and see it on a bit of paper, you can begin to say, well, actually, I do have time for this because look at all the things that I will gain if I manage to get control of my drinking. And look at all the things that will continue to happen if the situation stays the same, if there is no change and I carry on as I am. Then I'll be back here in a year's time going, oh, well, I could have given up a year ago, but unfortunately I was too busy. Oh, now I'm too busy again and so I've missed my window of opportunity. What window of opportunity? You just never gave yourself one because the, those windows of opportunity are within your control. So, um, so it's really important that you begin to, to be able to see that bigger picture. You know, you're all at work, you're doing strategies, you're doing all sorts of things. Treat yourself as a strategic project. Um, you would put time aside to do the tasks that it needed to get to the end of that project. You need to do the same with you now. Okay, so do the decision balance sheet. There's one in the file section. I will upload one um, to the um, to the blog that will come after this. And you've seen a picture of one, but it is it is really simple. You can do it in in any particular way. So so do that. Be clear about the what the consequences of not changing are. Then do it with the knowledge that soon you will naturally have more time by not being hungover, not being tired not manipulating social situations to drink, not, you know, seeing drinking as an extreme sport and staying up till one in the morning and, and drinking while you're watching telly and then watching telly while you're drinking and vice versa. You will gain more time by not drinking. You will amaze yourself. It just may take a little time to get there. It may not be instantaneous because you've got a journey to go through. You've got a journey of learning to deal with situations that you've normally dealt with without alcohol. You've got some, some cravings or some urges that you need to surf. Um, you've got some new skills to learn. You've got a community that can keep you accountable that you want to stay connected with. So that time won't release itself automatically, but you'll begin to see time in a different way. And I do really feel that um, I, when I gave up, I realized how much of my, my day had been planned and orchestrated around drinking very subtly not with any really big conscious decision making but you know never organizing early meetings um, planning how to get up early and out the house um, without too much effort because I'd always be a bit tired um, always um, going to the pub on a way to a meeting because I deserve some downtime um, n n always knowing that I wouldn't be able to do anything after about 10 p.m. and so never committing to anything. They're really small things, but when I talked about the pink fluffy cloud a few weeks ago, these are all the hundreds of many of little epiphanies I had that I, w I actually, I my life was being shaped around my drinking, my busyness was being shaped around my drinking, and I wasn't um, taking control of it. And and all these little they were all little small pockets of time would open up. Like I'd get home from work and I'd go, right, what do I do now? I have a whole evening ahead of me. 
I once sat and had a breakfast and said to my friend, I'm now taking two hours over breakfast in the morning. What's this about? And she said, it's because you're not hungover. It's because you've got time. It's because you've woken up with some energy and you're now taking time for yourself. Isn't it good that you're taking some less time before you get into a day of work? Well, yeah, this is what normal people do. Who knew? Who knew? So you will, you will rediscover pockets of time, but it may take a little while. So you just have to have faith in those that have gone before you and they're all here on the group, that, you know, you will get that time and there will never be an excuse again where you haven't got 10 minutes to meditate or you haven't got time to make a meal from scratch or you haven't got the time to read a book because they are all there They are, and they are things that will get you through the process of change. Okay, um, start with small parcels of time. The one thing I don't want you to do is to go, right, I'm putting two hours aside every day to think about not drinking and then when you don't achieve that, you'll go, see, I'm a complete failure. I, I can't give up drinking. And then throw your whole project out the window. See, see all of this as a work in progress and go, right, even if I just give myself five minutes to think about what it is that I'm doing today or tomorrow that will help me towards my drinking goal, then five minutes is good enough. It will all build up over time. You'll find yourself thinking about it on the tube, on the train, on the bus while you're sat on the loo at work, all of that sort of stuff. Um, there is time to think about this um, and you will be able to release that time. But don't see the failure of not making some time on a particular day as a failure of your whole drinking thing because that's what your inner critic wants you to do. It wants to tell you that you're completely useless at everything and so the minute you, that part of your plan goes wrong, you should dump the whole thing. Don't do that. It's what your inner critic wants the most. Um... You don't, and also you don't want to make it part of your guilt list. You're already a bit guilty about your drinking. Um, so you don't want to add it as another guilty thing. It's a thing that's an enabler. It's not a thing to feel guilty about. It's not another tick box on the tick list for you to look at and go, oh, if I don't do this, I am, you know, I am not achieving what I want to. No, this is about enabling you to make a change that you want. Remember that um, I, I think that dedicating some time each day to changing your drinking, um, even just think about it for five minutes, is is vital. It's like learning a new skill. Like I said, it's like you know you wouldn't le you wouldn't just get, turn up in France and think that you knew French. You would take some time to learn it. Um, if you were um, trying to plant some new um, plants in the garden, you'd probably spend some time reading a book about that particular plant and what it needed. Um, you know, even the small skills that we do, we often take time to look and read. You know, I spend lots of time online looking at how to use different programs and things like that. So why should I be treating myself and the change that I'm trying to make any different to that? Well, you shouldn't. And so um, recognising that you need to learn things in order to change your drinking is really important. You are learning every step of the way. You're learning from people in this group. You're learning from webinars. You're learning from blogs that you read. You're learning from books. You're learning every single step of the way. You're learning more about yourself in the process of change. So consider it a practice. Some people talk about mindfulness and taking some time each day for mindfulness, but really mindfulness is about making some time for yourself. And if in that time, in that five, ten minutes, you're just at the moment thinking about your change your drinking habits and what you need to do to make that happen, then that's perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be some great sat on a cushion thing. It just has to be time for you. Um, change also takes time. But it also takes commitment and one way that you can express that commitment is in the time that you put aside to make it happen um, and and the more committed you are the more successful you will be and what does that mean about commitment well it means not being half-assed about things it means putting time aside it means knowing that it will take effort it means learning and asking questions all of that is commitment and the interesting thing I find that's very different in this group between people who are trying to moderate their drinking and those people who are, who are going alcohol free is that alcohol free is a very definite commitment. I'm going alcohol free for X amount of time quite often. Forever is another, but X amount of time is a very clear, linear, d definitive process. You can see the edges of that goal. Those people who are moderating tend to go, right, my aim is to now moderate. But then they don't set um, clear and tangible goals that have, where you can see the edges. They don't go, right, I will, I'm definitely not drinking Sunday to Thursday. When I drink, I only want to drink this much and this drink and I will stop in this way. 
and then try and execute that plan what happens is they then go out don't stop at two drinks and 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 have never taken some time to plan how that evening is going to work I'm sounding pretty harsh now and that's not what I meant to do but it it's an interesting difference in in behavior and goal setting um, whereas saying or moderating feels like a goal but actually it isn't it it hasn't got any tangible edges and there's so many different rules you could set yourself about moderation and then you need to work out how you're going to make that happen but just saying I'm not touching this substance anymore is a lot easier those of you who are moderating you've got the harder task and that's why I find it quite interesting that that level of of commitment to setting the goal isn't as strong and definitely if you're going to do this um, and make moderation work for you, then you have to put aside time. You have to think about your goals. You have to have time to plan because the minute alcohol hits your brain, don't forget it's a mind altering drug. It it will really challenge your plans. Your inner critic is going to be on a holiday. So that's why I, I, I find that quite interesting around um, planning and goal setting, which leads me on to, um, to, the fact that if you don't know what to do with the time that you put aside then one thing you can do is the whoop and so I've um I will keep coming back to whoop but whoop basically means um wish outcome obstacle plan and you'll see some stuff in the file section but for me it's a really um good system uh, because you can set your whole overarching goal with a whoop I um, wish to moderate my drinking only drink two nights um, a week and stick to two drinks when I do. Your outcome is if I achieve this, I will be really happy with myself. I will learn new skills. I will begin to get my alcohol under control. I will feel proud. I'll be able to tell the group whatever you think your outcome is. Then you need to think about your obstacles. Right, well, after two drinks, everyone else in the room is going to start asking me for another round. And after two drinks, my resistance will be quite low to saying no. Right, what's my plan to deal with it? So you can think about your your big overarching plan, but this can also deal, right, today I've got after work drinks, how am I going to deal with that? Sit and take five minutes to plan your whoop. Um, and you can use your time, your planning time, this time that you put aside for yourself from your busy schedule to do a whoop. Um, I'm just checking that you can still hear me because I've just noticed my processor speed has gone really low, but I think you're all there. Right, so your wish, your outcome, your obstacle plan. And here's an example of what that might be in, in practice. I wish to drink only on a Friday and Saturday night. If I achieve this, I'll be more productive at work and less tired on Monday. My biggest obstacle is having a drink with Sunday lunch. Right, how are you going to avoid those drinks at Sunday lunch? Um, maybe you might avoid those occasions for a while, but if it happens, you'll find a pub and insist you go to a pub with an alcohol-free beer. So you see how the whoop works? So if you put yourself five minutes aside every day and go through a whoop for the day and maybe revisit your whoop for the, your overall process, um, your overall goal, um, then you might begin to um, uh, get a better feel for, um, uh, you'll be able to show stronger commitment, you'd have put some time aside for yourself and you won't be using busy as an excuse for not doing something because actually you've got a plan you've got a plan written down and if you stick to your plan you will achieve your goals that's the important thing right to have a plan and to achieve those goals so even if you make your five minutes a day quite formulaic like that or if you just want to put it aside just to reflect maybe even do a gratitude practice or something whatever works for you it's about putting time aside reading a chapter of a book whatever Doing something in that time is really important. So what next? Well, um, uh, rest is, I want to talk about rest because rest is time well spent. And I, I know we don't use the language very often here, but the language from um, uh, dependent alcohol programs is around recovery. And I think it's a really good word to remember that if you've been drinking a lot for a long period of time, you have um, not only altered your brain um, in some respects irreversibly, but many um, respects reversibly, but you've impacted your brain, you've impacted on nearly every organ and every part of your body. 
Um, so when I first gave up, I drank water like the bucket load. My body was like saying, right, I've had 25 years of dehydrating behavior where you drank wine instead of water whenever you were thirsty. So we're going to make up for that now, right? And my body just went, woohoo, drink water, drink water. And I drank gallons of the stuff. The same with sleep. I slept a lot. My body said sleep. And I went, oh, you know what? I don't have anything else to do right now because I'm not drinking. How about I have a little nap? And so I did what my body, I felt what my body wanted me to do and I did it. And and rest is a really important part of what you're going through. So again, don't keep yourself so busy that you can't rest. Don't keep yourself so busy that you feel that um, that your body's telling you one thing but you're pulling against it, want to do another and so you'll throw your hands up in the air and decide that you're a failure. And instead, um, feel what your body's telling you and put some time aside for rest. Even if that means, you know, you're listening to an audio book about drinking while you're having a bit of a snooze or you're, you know, just taking some time out and reading a chapter of a book or um, doing some cleaning or making a meal from scratch. You know, they have to be things that are a bit of R&R &R that might be good in terms of building your resilience. Finally, say no. It doesn't have to be forever, right? You can say no to things now. You can say no to going out and to doing some parties, stuff like that. It doesn't mean that's going to be the same forever. You know, if you look at it, our drinking behaviours haven't stayed the same throughout our years. We change, we develop. Just because you're saying no to, to some social events now, it doesn't mean it will be the same forever. So don't suddenly think, that's it, My, I've I've put some side, time aside for change. I'm changing in a way that makes me worried that I'm going to be like this forever, like the wind's going to blow and I'm going to stick in this position. Um, you don't need, you don't have to worry about that. You're saying no for now. No for now while you've put some time aside to um, dedicate to the thing that you want to change the most, the thing that will help you be resilient for those events in the future. So you don't have to go to every social thing. You can let some people in your household do some things for yourself you need to start treating yourself with consent and not doing things that you don't want to do. Especially if they're things that you would normally drink in order to survive, you know. Oh, I can only go to this party at Malcolm's house because Malcolm's so boring, I have to drink to get through it. Then don't go to the Malcolm's party. Why are you making yourself go into something that's boring, right? So begin to treat yourself with consent, begin to say no to some things and free up some parcels of time to dedicate to this change that's important to you. And in two, three, six months time, you can make another set of decisions about what you need to do to get you to the next phase of change after you've got, you know, some time under your belt. Because you're learning new skills, you're learning new ways of reacting to other people, you're learning new ways of, um, you're, you're, you're unwiring your brain from having just an instant alcohol will deal with this um, moment in time response that it's, that it's, got some Pavlovian um, trigger for. So learn to say no, put some commitment and time into, into recovery and remember that it doesn't have to feel like this forever. Okay so they're my tips for today. Um, I wanted to talk about two other things. One is um, you may or may not have seen that Amber Toza is coming to the Mindful Drinking Festival. So she's the comedian who wrote Sober Stick Figure. People often share some of her pictures in the group, but she wrote a story about her change from alcoholism um, and she's been dry nine years now and I met her a couple of weeks ago and she said she'll come along, which I think is really awesome. I want to make sure there's a really welcoming crowd there for her. She is funny and, um, and also very honest and candid and I think my mum was probably being her mum at the same time as being my mum um because of the way she describes her relationship with her mother but i shouldn't say that because my mum's going to be at the festival you'll all get to meet her so there we are and so if you haven't seen it this is the festival oh my god this is what this has been my too busy to do anything um but i am determined that after the festival i will be picking up my swimming again and i've said that here now so i've got some accountability with you all and um, just to remind you and also to thank you all, um, uh, we are determined that we want to make pay what you want work so that we don't have to put up a paywall for Club Soda and you've all been really generous over the last few weeks. But if you liked just this webinar, 
then you know even a pound would be really helpful um, and you can pay just for per webinar if you want to or pay a regular monthly amount up to you but like I said me and Lucy are very grateful that you've all embraced the pay what you want concept so um, that's it from me this week